Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I actually want to show you, uh, this is a piece I've been working on. I'm just doodling on it right now, uh, but it's another concept, fan art fun kind of thing. But what it led me to do is actually uh, try to explain some of the cross hatching. So as you see here, this is all, you know, just sketched out and drawn. Uh, but then as I start to ink it, I'm actually using some custom brushes. Uh, so what I want to do is, is I'm going to share a couple custom brushes with you so that you can get a feel for it and see what you think. But just so you know, majority of uh, everything here is generated with a custom brush. So uh, the way it works is like, if you notice, I sketched everything by hand. But then as I start to draw this in, I'm actually going to block in my, um, uh, I'll just draw out the silhouette here real quick and show you what I mean. So say I picture this plane or this couple ch uh, plane changes here on Batman's face to be all filled in. I'll just drag and drop that in there like that, release the selection. And then maybe I want to work on some of the shading here. So what I'll do is add a layer over top and then I'll grab one of these pre-defined uh, brushes that I made. I made some different cross hatching ones and I still got to get used to which ones work well in e each area because I just generated these. But what I'll do is kind of test it. And so if you notice, if I pull downward or upward, it's the same direction as far as the brush. Uh, so I've got the longer points on the one side and the shorter points on the other. Uh, so what that means to me when I generate a brush like that is that basically it's, it's going to always point the same direction. So I have to rotate the canvas. So if I want the uh, larger points to come off like this, I have to angle the canvas and the brush the way that I want. Now the other thing is, is that I made this work where the smaller, um, the less pressure, least amount of pressure, excuse me, gives you the smaller bit of the brush and as you press down you get a larger brush, okay? So I have to think about that as well. And generally what happens with a brush like this is you may have to stop it just shy of where you're going with it, and this is why I use layers, and then erase back, okay? So these brushes won't do all the work for you, but they're going to save you a lot of time. And then what I could do here is angle the, the screen a little bit differently. So I'm using that two finger pinch and then hit it again and then get some nice cross hatching. And I want to vary that up as well. So I want to practice different overlaps and effects and really mix up the brushes. So a lot of these effects I've already generated were actually a couple different brushes, but I kind of like that right there. I like the secondary shape that it's providing right there and it's going right with that curve that I would perceive in that area. So I think that a big part of this is when you start to do this is not compromising on what you think looks good. You see I got a little bit of overlap there I got to fix. So you want to basically, you know, put your sketch down and, and give yourself the, uh, the cues that you want to see for the inking. But then as you go in and ink this, even if you're using custom brushes, you don't really want to compromise too much, if at all. Uh, but now sometimes you're going to get these happy accidents, right? Bob Ross style. So, you know, if that happens, go with it. That's cool. But don't compromise and go, well, that looks good enough. You know, if you can make it better, make it better. But probably goes without saying. So let me add another layer. See, I, I like to keep these. Oh, my pencil's low. That's awesome. So I may have to cut the video off. And, and actually 5% on this pencil, probably plenty to explain this. But, but yeah, so the joys of the Apple Pencil. So the other thing is, like, say I want some lines right here. So I've got this just filled in. You can see there's kind of some lines going from left to the upper right right there. So another way to do this is to actually grab a selection first, like this. It's probably the, really the best way. Grab your brush and then oh, yeah, make sure you're not on a hidden layer. And then draw in that way. Now see, like that right there. That kind of looks cool by itself. But that doesn't really fit exactly what I was after. I actually like that. But I'm, I'm not going to leave it just because I just said don't accept <laughs> what you're not after. you got to really keep your, your vision in mind as you do this. Okay, so for instance, I, I draw these lines and they're too far apart for what I'm looking for. So I may generate a different brush. Now the other thing is if I draw these smaller, they're tighter together. You see that? It's not until I start really pressing hard that they separate. So I'm actually going to deselect this and show you how, how else we might get this to go. If I can deselect it, that'd be nice. Oh, this one. Do we? All right, so, so what I'm going to do is draw these lines really tight together like that. And then I'm just going to take this and drag one side out. I'm going to take off magnetic there and drag this side over. 
So notice how you could take the brush itself and create different effects that way. So you really want to think about utilizing the brushes and layers um, you know, to your advantage with this type of stuff. There's no one way to skin a cat or uh, a bat, but basically you just have to you know, really make the best use of all of this. Like one of the things I'll tend to do is if I find an effect I really like, make sure that's, oh, it's over the eye, that's why it looked weird. Uh, if I find, or if I generate an, an effect I really like, besides creating a custom brush of it, I might just um, save that layer. So if I get a really neat effect, or really, really uh, sharp looking cross hatching or whatever, I can save that layer and just use it as a layer like this. I can copy this, copy and paste, or cut and whoops. Making all kinds of mistakes here, folks. No editing today. Copy and paste and flip it, and that's gonna fit right over here somewhat. I might have to re-distort it into place, but you see what I'm saying? I'm gonna make good use of this stuff. So uh, I know people are, I just hear people saying, well, he's cheating, that's all cheating. But it's it's gonna save time. So certain pieces you really want to utilize this stuff and get yourself through the project as quick as possible. Like when those deadlines start to loom, deadlines, deadlines, we're creating lines, is that an entendre? Um, when those deadlines start to loom and you know they, they're coming at you, you got to do whatever it takes to get this stuff done. So don't don't feel like you're cheating. Now, the other thing is this is is you can mix up your your line work with this. So you switch to a regular brush. Um, you know, like what's where's my favorite one? Actually, it's still in this set, isn't it? Yeah, my Comic Inker right here, and then just mix up some uh, you know regular lines with these lines, and actually with uh, Procreate. I tend to pull into the line like this. You see my line's a little wavy there. Now remember too with this, if, if your line is a bit wavy for a curve that you're trying to hit, uh, you can mess around with streamline. I try to leave this off, but I'm feeling like I need it right now. So I'm going to bump that up a little bit, try it again. Come on. So a little bit to that. So mix up some regular line weight and, and line work with this. So it's not all just, um, you know, you'll get kind of this mechanical look with this stuff too. So you got to be careful of that. But I think that with more practice, uh, you'll start to blend that in more and more. So a big part of that is varying it up. So for instance, like this area that's on his brow right there, I could probably soften this up a bit more with either another series of small lines or even some uh, some tighter lines right across the brow like this. So just the variation sometimes can really uh, make it work a little bit better. So let's try a new layer on top. And let's grab another one of these brushes. Let's try uh, the short spikes brush is kind of what I was picturing. Let's see if this works or not. I don't think that's gonna, it's too, uh, it's too much. This is actually an area where if I'm trying to make something look specular, like I might do something like, I might use this on the neck or something like that. So you can see how those work. So notice that as I pull down with this, the spikes are on the right. As I pull up with this, the spikes are on the left. So that's kind of the effect I was going after with that brush, but that's not going to work there on the brow like I thought. Uh, let's see what this one looks like. Mm, it might work. And this one you have to rotate. And it's also uh, going to change size based on pressure. Let's try something like that. So I feel like this needs to be curved. But let's just roll with it, see what we get. And then we can also come back and maybe erase a, a single line right through here. Or maybe two lines. So little effects like that can really make it look a little bit more hand generated. Oh, went over the brow more right there. So use those negative lines with this stuff as well. In fact, I could probably do that to soften up this area too. So which one is that? You really want to start merging these down after you're good with them. But I'll show you like with this area right here. I might take and do a few negative lines right there. So just little things like that to give it a little bit more variation. Uh, so let's try uh, what other brush. I think I already showed you this thin spike. Straight spike up there. 
Hatching, uh, brush, tilted, spikes. I don't know if we did this one yet. So the main thing is that you realize that by tilting the screen, some of these are you're going to just tilt the brush. Other ones you're going to tilt the screen. So let's try, let's try getting this cheek right here. So I'll take a selection. Just draw through the selection. Remember you can pick up. Move the screen, zoom in, redraw the selection. This is one of the best selection tools ever, if not ever. It's freaking cool. But um, yeah, it's it's just awesome the way they designed this selection tool. I wish all of them had the same selection tool. Like, hey, Clip Studio, do you hear me yapping? Because that would be pretty sweet. I don't know if that's legal or I don't know how that works. But okay, so put a layer over top of that and then draw up some of these spikes. Again, I got this effect going where it's like kind of thicker and then they space out. So I'm, I'm probably not going to get that. I actually got to generate this brush. So I'm going to generate this one next. And remember, if you guys can give me your feedback, I'm going to come up with new brushes. So this is one that I want to come up with where the lines start thicker and they thin out. So I've got to develop that brush. But what I'm going to do is at least get the same direction going. So if I press hard and let off, I'm going to get a bit smaller effect there. So what I'm going to try to do here is actually go smaller, larger, like that. That's probably good. And then select that, move it into place. So remember you can grab each one of these points, distort, play around with it, get it just the way you want, and then come back with an erase. I want a little bit over there. Erase that back to where you want it. Again, remember you can do a couple little negative lines if you want. Actually, I'll save that for a minute. And then I want to get a little bit of cross hatching in there, so I'm going to rotate like that, and then erase again. So hopefully you can see there's a lot of potential here with these brushes. I mean that I don't know if I'll keep that area right there the way that it is, but uh, you can see those lines would have took quite a while for me to generate. And all those, these do look a bit too mechanical for me. Uh, I'll just keep working with it and figure out applications where I can introduce this into my work and it not look too mechanical. So again, mix it up with the hand-drawn techniques that you use and have this be just another uh, tool to the toolbox, not a, you know any kind of replacement to your hand-drawing techniques. If anything, maybe this will spark more ideas and then you start to try to recreate these with the way that you do your own line work uh, with a regular brush. Uh, so hopefully this has been helpful. I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below for these brushes so that you can test them out. Let me know what you think so I can make new brushes for you. And I really appreciate you watching. Keep in mind that I've got some classes on Skillshare. I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below for that as well where I teach how to draw comics. Uh, so we can have some fun over there as well. So thanks very much for watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.